Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm making a video all about the top 17 books I want to read in 2017. So last year I made a video just like this called the top 16 books I want to read in 2016, and essentially what I did is I went through all of my bookshelves and looked at my personal TBR of the books that I own and picked out the books that I really want to get to in that year. And this year I decided that I want to do the same thing because I don't make monthly TBRs because I feel like it's too constricting for me personally, so I like to make one big yearly TBR of the books that I own so I know which ones I really want to get to this year and make them my priority. I've already made a video of my most anticipated releases for the year and those books are obviously included on the books I want to get to in 2017 as well, but like I said these are specifically the ones that I already own that have been on my TBR shelf for a long time and that I've been meaning to get to and I finally decided that this is the year that I want to read them. So without any further ado I have 17 books to talk about so let's just get into them. The first two books on my list I'm only counting as one because it's kind of just like this whole trilogy, but that is The Darker Shade of Magic. Magic Trilogy by V.E. Schwab. I own the first two books, A Darker Shade of Magic and A Gathering of Shadows, and then the third book comes out in February, I believe, and I really want to get to these two before the third book comes out. I read Vicious by V.E. Schwab in 2016, and I really, really loved that book, and I've been wanting to pick up more of her work ever since I read it. From what I understand about this series, it's an adult fantasy series that takes place in like parallel versions of London, so we follow around these characters, and I don't know if like all of them can do this, but they can kind of like travel through different versions of London that are all based on like different colors. That's all I really know and what I've gathered. I haven't like actually looked too much into the synopsis of these because I don't really want to know anything. I just kind of want to be surprised by the world. But I've heard some fantastic reviews of the series and several of you like I said have recommended them to me so I cannot wait to finally pick them up this year and see what I think. The next book on my list is one that I've actually already started and that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. So Nevernight is an adult fantasy novel and I just have to say this because I made a mistake in one of my past videos and I thought this was a YA novel and then I started reading it and I realized that it wasn't a YA novel at all. A lot of you also corrected me in the comments of whatever video that was telling me that it's not YA and you're 100% right this is an adult novel because it deals with a lot of sexual themes and language so please do not go into this thinking that it's YA because it is not. But like I said this is a fantasy novel and it's actually really complicated and kind of hard to explain and I'm not that far into it so I can't give you like too many details about it. But it follows around this girl who is an assassin and she is kind of on a revenge mission because her family was taken from her and she wants to get revenge on the people who destroyed her family. So I actually started reading this in 2016 right at the end of the year like at the very end of December and I read about 30 pages I think that's it but I had to put it down because I I loved it so much that I knew it was going to be like one of my favorite books and I had already made my list of like favorite books of 2016. I'd already filmed that video so all of that was already done and I knew that this book would have been on that list if I finished it in 2016 so I put it down so I could pick it up again like a week later in 2017. So that's what I decided to do and that's why I didn't finish it in 2016 which kind of sounds ridiculous but like you know the things you do for YouTube. The narrative structure of this book is just so interesting. It's told from like a third person narrator who is narrating this girl's life but then they also address like the reader as well so sometimes it like breaks that fourth wall and it's just so strange and weird but so amazing and I've never read anything like this before so I'm so excited to finish it up and see how it all ends and see how everything plays out because like I said I can already tell that this is going to be an all-time favorite book. The next book on my list is one that is actually carrying over from my last video from last year and that is The Grace Keepers by Christy Logan. So in this story the world has essentially flooded and there is a divide between the people who live on land and the people who live on sea. And we follow around these two characters, one of whom lives on land and the other one who lives on sea and is part of a traveling circus. It's a fantasy novel so it has some magical elements in there as well. And I've also heard that this has some LGBTQ plus characters as well and I've been meaning to get to this forever. I actually started this book and I got about like 30 pages in and I really really liked it. I thought the writing was really beautiful but I just never finished it off. So I've decided that this is the year where I finally finish this book because it has been way too long. The next book on my list is actually a classic and that is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I have a good friend who absolutely adores this book. It's one of her favorite books of all time and she's been pressuring me to read it for so long now so I've decided that this is going to be the year where I finally tackle my first Tolstoy novel. I've heard that this book is extremely convoluted and there are a lot of characters who have the same name so it can get really really confusing but I'm very excited to get around to it because I actually really like reading classics 
classics and it's been a long time since I've read a classic, but I haven't gotten into any of the classic Russian authors yet. So I thought that this would be a good place to start since it's one of the most famous ones. The next book that I really wanna to get to in 2017 is Homegoing by Yad Jassi. This book came out last year and it got so much hype. So many people on booktube were reading it on the bookstagram community, just like literally everywhere. I saw this book everywhere. It's about these two half sisters who were both born in 18th century Ghana and one of them is sold into the slave trade and the other one is married off to a wealthy Englishman. And then the story follows the generations of each of their families throughout history up until modern day. So it discusses a lot of really important issues and topics like race and slavery. And I've also heard that it's just fantastically written as well so I just cannot wait to pick this book up. So I just never got around to reading this last year but I'm going to pick it up as soon as possible because I have a feeling I'm really going to love it. The next book on my list is Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This book came out in 2015 I believe and it was on my list of books I wanted to read last year as well I think but I just never got around to picking it up and then the sequel Gemina came out in 2016 and I still didn't pick it up because I'm terrible but this year I am finally going to read it because I've been wanting to get into some more sci-fi so I thought this one would be a great place to start. I honestly do not know a thing about the actual plot of this story. I just know that it's told in like a really cool format in emails and text conversations and just like so many different things like I've never seen anything like this book in my entire life and I'm just so excited to see what I think of it but yeah it's kind of huge so it's a little bit intimidating but again the format I think will make it a lot shorter than it actually seems so I cannot wait to get around to this one and see what I finally think. The next book on my list is The Diviners by Libba Bray. The Diviners takes place in the 1920s in New York and it's a fantasy novel that follows the story of this serial killer and we follow around our main character named Evie who discovers that she has a secret hidden power that might be able to help the police catch this serial killer. That's all I really know about the story plot wise but I've heard wonderful things about these books and it's a trilogy I believe but the third book still hasn't come out and I don't even think it has a release date yet. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna pick this one up around Halloween so in October because I think that would be a really fun time to read it. The next book on my list is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I cannot even tell you how many people have asked me to read this book. Several of my friends in real life have read and absolutely adored this book and have asked me to read it. So many people here on booktube have asked me to read it. There are countless reviews for this series just praising and praising it. So for all of you who've been asking me to read this series nonstop, I will finally read it in 2017. I promise you that. If I don't end up reading it by the end of the year, I don't know what you can do to me but like just hold me accountable for it. Make me read this book because I have to. I truly know almost nothing about this book at all but I've intentionally kept it that way because I don't want to know a thing. I really like going into fantasy and just being completely surprised so that's what I've decided to do with this one. I just know that it's a fantasy novel that follows the life of this one man who I believe is a magician or wizard or something and it's apparently very epic and beautifully written which sounds like everything I will love so hopefully that is how I end up feeling. The next book I want to read in 2017 is Atonement by Ian McEwan. So the movie Atonement is literally one of my all-time favorite movies. I adore that movie so much and I've owned the book for I think about a year or if not over a year now and I still haven't picked it up and I think that's because I've actually heard reviews of people saying that they liked the movie better than the book but I still really want to read it because I do enjoy the movie so much. It's about the romance between this man and this woman and the younger sister of the woman ends up finding out about the relationship that her sister has and ends up kind of ruining it and she ends up spending the rest of her life trying to atone for what she did to her sister's relationship. It's such an incredible story and it's so heart-wrenching. It makes me cry every single time so I'm really hoping that I enjoy the book as much as I enjoyed the film. The next books on my list are actually a series of comics and that is the Avatar The Last Airbender comics. This is the first comic in the series, The Promise Part 1, and I've actually already read this one but I want to read the rest of the comics this year and I'm just counting them all as one book because that would be like way too many. As many of you know I am like the biggest Avatar The Last Airbender fan. It's my entire life so I decided that I wanted to finally start reading the comics and I read this one at the very end of 2016 so I want to continue on with the rest of the series in 2017. I can't really explain what these are about because it's basically just a continuation of the original Avatar like series, the TV series, and if you haven't seen those I don't know what you're doing. Literally go watch Avatar right now. It'll change your life. But yeah there are so many of these comics and I didn't even 
even realize how many there were. So this is going to be the year where I continue on with my Avatar love. Because even though I do a rewatch of the series like every single year and sometimes twice a year, I feel like I just haven't had enough of it in my life. And this year I'm gonna have a lot more. <laughs> the next book on my list is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This is a YA contemporary novel that follows the story of these two twins, Jude and Noah. And it takes place over two different timelines. One timeline where they're 13 years old and another timeline where I believe they're 16 years old. And ever since they were kids up until they're 13, Jude and Noah have always had a very close relationship. But then something happens that kind of tears them apart and keeps them estranged from one another for a couple of years. So by the time they're 16, they're really not talking to each other almost at all. And this is also an LGBTQ plus book because Noah's character is gay and he's one of the main characters. I actually started reading this book in 2016 and I made it about like 80 pages in, I think. And I really, really enjoyed what I'd read so far. But then other things just came up and I just kept putting this one back down and I never got around to picking it up again. So I wanted to finish it off this year because like I said, I'd really enjoyed what I'd read. The next book on my list is The Thing Around Your Neck by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I've been meaning to read something by Adichie for literally so long and I don't know why I still haven't picked anything by her up yet. But this is the one book that I own by her and it's actually just a collection of short stories. I've really been wanting to read Americana as well, but since this is the one I own, I thought it would be a good one to start with. I know that a lot of the stories in here focus on relationships, both romantic and platonic, so I've been really, really excited to get to this and try out her writing because all I've heard are fantastic things. The next book on my list is The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. This is a YA fantasy novel that I have heard compared to The Night Circus countless times, which is exactly the reason I want to read it. So from what I understand, it's about these two families who are both traveling performers and they have a rivalry between them. And a girl from one of the families and a boy from one of the other families end up meeting and they fall in love. So they have to deal with the conflict between their rivaling families. So it kind of sounds like it's going to be like a Romeo and Juliet inspired type of retelling. I don't really know if it's supposed to be, but it sounds like it's going to be really interesting. And I've heard fantastic reviews from a lot of people that I trust. And if it's anything like The Night Circus, you all know that I will absolutely adore it. The next book on my list technically isn't just like a book. It's kind of an author and I own like three of their other books and I don't have a specific one I really want to get to. I just want to read another book by this author. And that author is Patrick Ness. So I have two of his books right here. The rest of us just live here as well as The Crane Wife. I don't really know which one I want to get to specifically, but I just know that I really want to read more Patrick Ness this year. I read A Monster Calls last year and absolutely adored that book. So I've been meaning to pick up more of his books, but I've just never gotten around to it. And I own three of his other books and I still haven't read them. I don't know what's wrong with me. So yeah, I'm gonna make this a year of more Patrick Ness because I adore his writing and his storytelling and I need more of it in my life. The next book on my list is Slade House by David Mitchell. This is another book that I've actually already started as well and so far I'm really, really loving it. It's a novel but it's kind of like a novella because we get a bunch of different stories from different perspectives that are all about the same thing so they all tie into one another. All of the stories are related to this house called Slade House which from what I've read so far and I understand is kind of haunted and we get different perspectives from different characters who all live in Slate House. So far, like I said, I'm absolutely loving it. The writing is exquisite and the story itself is so compelling. And I'm hoping to finish it off very soon because I have a feeling it's also going to be a favorite. So the next book on my list is another classic and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. So Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte is one of my all-time favorites, if not my all-time favorite classic. And I've never read anything by any of the other Bronte sisters, including Jane Eyre, which is like one of the most popular classics that exists. And like I said with Anna Karenina, I've been wanting to read more classics because I really do enjoy reading classics. So I thought this year would be a good time to finally pick up Jane Eyre and see what I think of it. And finally, the last book on my list ties directly into Jane Eyre, and that is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. So Jane Steele is essentially like a retelling kind of satirical version of Jane Eyre that follows around a girl named Jane Steele who is a serial killer. So I've heard fantastic reviews of this book and I think it's going to be so much fun to read directly after reading Jane Eyre because you'll be able to see like a lot of the connections a lot more clearly. And I've already planned a potential buddy read with one of my friends with this book. So I'm just so excited to get to this one and it's definitely one of my most anticipated reads of the year. All right guys, but that is it for my list of top 17 books I I want to read in 2017. Let me know in the comments down below what are the top three books on your TBR that you've been meaning to get to that are your top priority for 2017. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!